Hello everyone. I've been working on something a little different recently. While I often show a lot about first-person shooter design here on this channel, I'm also a long-time fan of real-time strategy games. For over a decade now, I've wanted to make one, but that type of project is a massive undertaking for anyone, let alone a solo developer. Despite this, I have spent a, a disordinate amount of time designing one, which I call Project Element, or Element for short. So I thought, why not take a crack at just part of it? See what sticks. This RTS controller is the result. Now, let's establish a few things first before we get into it. This is not a game. Let me repeat. This is not a game. When I say controller, I mean player controller, as in how the camera moves and how you interact with the game. There are units and buildings and other RTS elements, but they are all just a facade. The units are basic, there's no sound, the art is just quick mock-ups, nothing here is meant to show polish. This is, unabashedly, a rough prototype, and that is all. I gave myself a hard deadline of a month to put together what I could in Unreal Engine 5.3 using just blueprints. And while I am personally quite proud of the results, this is not remotely done. I just wanted to practice my programming and take a crack at building some data-driven systems. Note that any key bindings that I mention would be offered as customizable hotkeys. I would never lock keyboard functionality behind specific key choices. Finally, since this was always destined to be a prototype and nothing more at this point, I have unapologetically stolen icons from the canned Command & Conquer Generals 2 from 2013. If for no other reason than I think they're cool. Okay, I think we've covered all the caveats. Let's dive in. Element is designed to be a micro-heavy action RTS, primarily taking mechanical inspiration from Command & Conquer, StarCraft, and Halo Wars while injecting a few novel concepts itself. With that in mind, the camera is more action-driven than strategy-driven. You can scroll the camera using one of three methods, WASD or arrow keys for directional movement using the mouse at the edge of the screen to scroll, or holding the middle mouse button to scrub the direction the camera moves. The WASD movement was an interesting find because I discovered it in Halo Wars and loved the separation of the mouse from the movement. I have since incorporated that into many RTS games that I do play. And finally, the Command & Conquer style scrubby scroll, as I call it, works by holding the middle mouse button down on the screen and moving your mouse. The camera will move proportionally to the distance from which you clicked, allowing for subtle movements or quick flicks. This way of map navigation is a way that I think all RTS games should offer, so I implemented it here. Using any of the scrolling methods, holding shift will sprint the camera, tripling the movement speed. Another good find from Halo Wars 2. You can zoom the camera in and out using the middle mouse wheel or the page keys. And inspired by the excellent homeworld deserts of Karak, I also added what I like to call the over map. Pressing the tab key will shoot your camera up for a better view of the whole map. While you can control things from that height, the distance would make it disadvantageous to spend your whole game up there. Finally for the camera, there is camera jumping. Space will jump your camera to the latest event, like your unit being under attack or a player ping. Shift space will jump your camera to your command center, the central starting building of the game, and use a control in the M greater than, less than, or question mark key can set up up to four bookmark locations, and just tapping the respective key will jump you to that location. To boot, all of this camera functionality is built into a reusable, project-agnostic actor component, so for future prototypes, I could just drag and drop, and I don't have to redo any code. As mentioned, units are only barely implemented, since they weren't the focus of the project. Units and element are meant to be versatile, since there is a unit cap of 20, each had to do a number of things. I wanted making a single unit to represent a significant investment of resources, and a significant shift in strategy. You can select them with the left mouse button, using shift to add or remove them from your selection, or click and drag the left mouse button to marquee select multiple units. You can command them with the right mouse button, which at this point just moves them using a modified version of Unreal's crowd controller and a custom formation system. They can also perform a number of actions, which are shown in the bottom right on the action bar. This shows a portrait of the unit, its health and veterancy, as well as a row of icons counting the different units in the selection and a bunch of buttons that issue different commands. Element is designed in such a way that all available actions you can do, depending on your selected units, are shown at the same time. 
Whereas in a game like StarCraft, you might have two different spellcasting units in your group, but only one is shown in the command card, and thus only one's hotkeys work. The action bar is designed to show all available actions from all the units in your group at once, smartly commanding only the units that can perform those actions when the command is issued. There are common commands like attack move, split, stop, deploy, and return to base, taking up the X, Z, C, B, and H keys respectively, which exist on several units and do what you think they do. There is also the recycle move, which sends a unit back to its production structure to be deleted and return a portion of its resources to you. Below them are special actions like rocket pods or deploy mines, which are specific to a single unit and fit onto one of five action slots shown in order in the bar and taking up the R, F, V, G, and T keys on your keyboard, respectively. Below the portrait are stances, which changes the aggression of the unit, with aggressive pursuing spotted enemies, defensive holding its ground, and passive holding its fire completely. While missing, it is also intended that any upgrades the unit has would show up at the bottom of the action bar as well. Units can take damage, heal, and gain veterancy, represented by a small chevron on their health bar and on their portrait. A final note on units, there are also air units. These navigate over top of other units and buildings, up and down cliffs, and smoothly animate, for the most part. While units were out of scope for this project overall, this was a particular bugbear of mine for many years. So maybe I got a little bit vengeful with it, but overall I think it came out pretty smooth. Workers operate like units, but they have their own population cap of three, and they are avoided in mass selections so they don't get sent charging into battle. Element is designed with a Command & Conquer General's style worker philosophy, where you only have a few of them, and their job is to build and repair exclusively. Resources in this game are harvested automatically by harvesting structures, which are built on specific locations. Workers have a unique action build, which opens the building menu, showing all of the buildings you can construct. This is the first example of a menu system I've used a number of different times in this project. One major element missing from all of them is that items you can't build yet should be grayed out. However, there is no prerequisite or tech tree system implemented in the prototype, so for now, they still show up even though they shouldn't. Once you select a building, your cursor gets a ghost of the building, and you can place that on any valid terrain in the world, since the worker will go over and build it. When the worker arrives, it will begin constructing and must remain there until it is done. If the worker is pulled away, the construction will stop, but you can right-click mid-construction buildings and send the worker back to finish it. Once the building is placed, it will consume resources, and once it is finished construction, it will begin either giving or taking power from your power grid. Buildings can be selected just the same as units, and have a number of actions themselves. They have their own version of recycling, which slowly deconstructs the building and returns half its cost back to you. They have Rally, which doesn't work, but it sort of works if you right-click on the terrain with the building selected. This places a Rally point, which spawned units will move towards. And many have production abilities. The barracks trains infantry units, the factory produces vehicles, and the airfield produces aircraft. Selecting these actions opens the familiar production menu, where you can select the unit you want to produce, and the building will start working on it. If you have more than one of them selected, it will actually spread the production across all the buildings in the selection. Science buildings have a similar menu which researches upgrades, a feature not fully implemented, but it does do the progress bar thing, and command buildings have the action to produce a worker. Now, onto the interface. I wanted to try to make something that was compact and out of the player's way, scalable for functionality, and useful for new players. Let's start with the top menus. The game menu, accessed by F10, pauses the game, offers settings, and a number of ways to quit out of the game. The team menu does not work, but it would show all of the players in the game offer things like resource sharing, muting, kicking, and so on. The chats don't work, but would open text chats for in-game. And callouts also doesn't work, but would offer a radial menu for character quotes, voice lines, and relevant callouts mid-game. Down in the bottom left is the minimap corner. Here we have the minimap, which projects the level and the units onto it. Missing features here would include clicking on the minimap to go to the location and showing things like alerts when they appear. To the left of the map is a non-functional ping button, which would prime for a contextual ping, and a button to use the overmap, which, if you recall, is also activated by pressing tab. And this actually also changes the player's representation on the minimap too, which gets bigger. 
Moving to the top right of the map, there is a button to cycle through your workers, and two buttons for selecting local and global combat units. With local selecting the units that are on screen and global selecting all the combat units across the map. These can also be activated by either pressing Q once for local or double tapping Q for select all. And finally, below that are three macro menus, which make producing units, buildings, and upgrades much easier to do while handling multiple other things. Macro units or control C will open a menu that lets you select any unit you can produce in your army and allocates that job to whatever building you have that can do it. Macro buildings or control Z opens up a product menu for the buildings, much like it does for a worker. And once you select the building and place it, the closest available worker will go there and begin to construct it. And the macro upgrades would do the same thing for upgrades, letting you manage upgrades depending on what science buildings you have available, but that didn't get in before the deadline. Unit control groups are also implemented and working, where pressing control and any number key will make a group and simply pressing that number key will select a group. You can also double tap that number key and the camera will jump to that group's location. On the bottom of the screen, there is a control group button where control clicking it makes the group and clicking it or double clicking them selects or jumps the camera to them. These were implemented late into the project, so they are missing some polish and features like removing the control group when all the units inside die, but all the core functionality is there. In the top middle is where your abilities would come into play. Elements design is built around a class-based commander system, where they all have different active and passive abilities, which would have been represented here, along with a portrait of the commander in the middle and an experience gain which would let you unlock or upgrade those abilities. This feature was blocked out, as evidenced by the fact it's here, but it was not built in the back end. And finally, the humble settings menu. What can I say? It's super weird, and I put it right next to designing the credit sequences of movies as strange design roles that I thoroughly enjoy. I'm a massive advocate of giving the player a lot of control over their game preferences, and I strongly believe in the idea of, when in doubt, make it an option. So all the gameplay preferences that are here work, and even all the video settings work. The audio, while working, uh, is kind of hard to show off because the game has um, no sound, but they do work, I promise. So, all in, this was a resounding success of a project in my books. Is it perfect? Not a chance. Could I have done more? Absolutely. Will I add to it? Not for now, but maybe someday. I learned a lot about Unreal Blueprint coding. Shout out to Math Expressions. Didn't think I'd ever say that, but they're pretty rad. Further improved my knowledge of data-driven game systems, got deeper into the advanced input system, and learned a lot about how Unreal works under the hood. I got deeper into Detour Crowd AI and AI navigation, and I finally conquered my flying unit conundrum. Learned a lot about render targets and projection, and got the chance to validate my design feelings about a more inclusive action RTS controller. So for now, I think this is where I'll leave it. This video is long enough as it is, and if you've stuck around until now, I appreciate it because it's a lot of work to, to put this prototype together. Until next time, take care.